this this time we're finally going to be starting Pokemon Emerald with the same challenge as before. We're going to be gaining zero experience points. Now, for this video, I'm going to not do whispering, but instead a very low, deep voice. But before I do, if you enjoy my content, for first of all, thank you once again for subscribing, liking, and sharing your comments in my videos. I really appreciate all of you, and it means the world to me. And for this, I'm going to try something new. Instead of whispering, I'm going to use my lower voice. So I'm going to transition to my soft, deeper voice in three, two, one. Hello, guys. Buku Strikes here. Now, for this one, we're going to be playing Pokemon Emerald with zero experience points. So, for this video, I wanted to give you a, a small demonstration of what I'm planning to be doing. So, if you look at my team right now, you'll see that we're prepping ourselves to fight Roxanne. We have Taylor, Shroomish 1, Shroomish number 2, Slackoth, Trico, another Taylor. Oh, that's it. So, for this video, I just merely want to demonstrate and try out this new voice format while I beat Roxanne. So, if you haven't watched my previous videos, essentially for the Zero Experience Points Challenge, the whole premise is that we go through the game without gaining a single point of experience. Our Pokemon never level up, so the only way we can get stronger is either through items, catching new Pokemon, or EV training. Now, for Roxanne, she can be kind of tricky because the highest level Pokemon we can catch is level 8. And her Nose Pass in Emerald is level 15. So this is going to be really tricky and I'll be honest with you guys, I haven't fought her yet. So I don't know how this is going to go. I did a lot of preparation beforehand, but I'm still on the edge of what could happen. So let's try some things. I have a couple orange berries that I'm planning to give to Trico. Oh, before I do that, let me change the text speed. Thank you. And my frame too. Okay, awesome. So, let's head to the gym and start this challenge. No need to fight those trainers because they're not important. So here, we're going to be fighting Rockstar now. Honestly, I have no idea how this is going to go, so let's see. Okay, this is already kind of bad that her Geodude outspeeds our Shurish. So for my new strategy, it seems that I'm going to have to force her to burn her potions on her Geodude. Okay, that makes sense. So 
at least for now, we know that her nose pads will not have many potions to use on. So this may be a good opportunity for us. I'm also really curious as to why her Geodude never attacks us. But I won't be complaining too much about that. It works out for us in the end. So I'm going to keep in Shroomish because most of this team was prepared for her nose pass. Huh. It's strange that the second Geodude is slower than the first one. And once again, she refuses to attack my Shroomish. I'm really curious and I'm pretty sure her Geodude's no Rock Tomb also. So if she wanted to, she could just eliminate me this very second. Oh, and there is the rock tomb. Interesting maneuver by Roxanne. Okay, this is great. She uses her potions, and because of that, now her nose pass will have no potions. But the downside is that this Shroomish is now slower than her Geodude, so this Shroomish might go down. I taught Trico Bullet Seed because Trico doesn't start off with the grass move and Trico needs a grass move to, you know, do damage to rock types. So her nose pass is fairly powerful. So my plan was to use a faster Pokemon like Taylor to use Growl so that the other Pokemon can survive her Rock Tombs and be able to progress in this match. Of course, in my undoing, I have not realized that her Nose Pass is faster than my Taylor's. Interesting. And once again, she refuses to attack I'm not really sure if I'm going to be proud of this attempt because her AI is doing very poorly. Okay, there we go. So this Taylor is definitely going to be faster because of the one level difference. Okay, that's really strange. Are these Taylors the same speed? Oh no. My apologies, I completely forgot that Rock Tomb does lower your speed. I just was not expecting Taylor to actually live that attack. So the purpose of Slack Off is to use Yarn so that the Trico and the Shumish can have an easier time dealing with Nose Pass. I'm perplexed as to why her nose passes and her geodudes are so obsessed with using Harden and Defense Girl, but I'm not sure if this is one of those moments where I just accept the win or if I want to redo this to make sure that my strategy is as reliable as possible.
Oh, that's actually really bad. I was unaware that she would go for block immediately. So we're kind of stuck here. Well, because of this unexpected turn of events, you're just going to have to get some relaxing keyboard sounds. I guess it's down to Trico now. I didn't expect her to finally use Rock Tomb to finish me off. Alright, and there we go. And th just like that, we have defeated the first gym leader of Hoenn with no experience points now normally i would end the video but it's only 12 minutes and that's not enough relaxation for you guys so you can watch me just hang around and go through the story i guess i'll give you let's say about 30 minutes of this i hope that's okay with you guys if you can stand me for another 18 minutes. Since nothing important is going to be happening for a while, you can just enjoy the soft in-game sounds and my keyboard. I just want to interject for one second. So in hindsight for that battle, one thing I definitely could improve on is perhaps EV training my Shroomish so that for one, they can be faster than the Geodudes. And for two, EV train my Talos so that they will also be faster than the Nose Pass. Because I did do the calculations and I was hoping they would outspeed, but it turns out my Wow, I was hoping that they would outspeed, but for next time, I should consider the possibility that I would have to train up so that I could outspeed. I just want to reflect on that because there are obvious improvements I can make to these kind of battles, and definitely one of them is ensuring that my strategy is more reliable. And also for catching certain Pokemon, like the Shroomish for example, I could ensure that the nature that is selected 
would be one that would be ideal for that situation. So for example, I, well, in this scenario, it did work out in a way because, because her geodudes used the potions instead of the nose pass, and the geodudes are 100% less threatening than her nose pass. So in a way, that part worked out, but well, I guess if you consider that a strategy, then yes, it did work out. But 100%, my Talos needed to be faster than the nose pass at all times. And also, my Shroomish needed to be faster than the Geodude. So, I'm thinking ahead of how I'm going to face Brawly. Now, I know Brawly is the fighting type gym leader, obviously, and I was hoping that all of his Pokemon only know normal and fighting type noobs because in Pokemon Emerald, you can catch a Sableye in the Rust Boil Tunnel, but I'm wondering if you can only catch the Sableye in the tunnel part where you need the Mock Bike, or if you can catch it just in the deeper levels of the darkness, because that would be very useful me because if I can recall correctly his Machop no seismic toss mainly his metatite only has focus punch and his Mukahita has vital throw and tackle so with that in mind It would be beneficial if I did have a ghost type, but I haven't done the research yet, so I am unsure. But let's assume that I don't have access to save a life. What would I do? So what I'm thinking what I would do for Broly is Well, I know I would be catching a few Talos because at this point in the game Talo would be the only one actually I'm thinking about it now You know, as a kid, I used to actually sometimes would because once you deliver the package to Steven in the cave, you are technically allowed to move to Slateport City. And from there, I believe you can start the, the Team Aqua quest to free the museum. If I were to be able to go through the museum and ultimately go up the route north, I could catch myself some higher level Pokemon to use for Broly, 
actually now that I think about it I'm gonna have to do some research later but I think that's my best course of action moving forward just some introspection to prepare for Brawly because even as a kid Brawly was a gym leader I would always struggle with not with his metatite the metatite or is it metatite? I think it's metatite his metatite I never struggled with it was the Makahida with the combination of bulk up and a vital throw he always gave me a lot of trouble even into my later adult years Broly could become tricky but if I am correct I should be able to catch a Sableye and completely invalidate the experience but that's just all an assumption that I'm making based off of hazy memory I could be totally wrong and I probably am
You know, one thing that never made sense to me, the scientist said that this is a new feature that he developed. Okay, that makes sense. So if it's a new feature, how does everyone else in all of Holland already have the feature to call me? Doesn't really make sense when you think about it, but it's Pokemon. What make re- what really makes sense in Pokemon? If you think about it for a second. Strangely enough, Hoenn is the only region besides, I want to say maybe besides Unova, but Unova is a unique case where Cut was never needed to progress through the main story. As far as I can remember, Cut is mainly optional in the Hoenn region. Now, I am 100% not going to fight May. For one thing, you don't have to fight her. You can skip past her. And for two, she is not someone you want to face. With your current team of scrubby Pokemon, I would highly not recommend fighting May. You're just going to have a bad time. Maybe there's a way to beat her, but I will not be the one to test that out because there's no need to. Well guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the new voice change. Let me know if you enjoyed these or the whispering one. I'll try to incorporate both to accommodate for everyone, but let me know if you did enjoy my voice, if it was maybe too loud at some points, too sharp, and I can always adjust it for you next time. But for the next time for this series, we're going to be taking on Brawly and possibly, oh, also Rival 3 as well, or May 3. But with that, I want to thank you guys once again for listening. I hope you enjoyed the keyboard sounds and my voice. I hope you were relaxed, entertained, and maybe learned something new about Pokemon Emerald. Take care, guys, and I hope you have a great
great night or a great morning, depending on when you listen. And with that, Buku Strikes out. See ya.